It is good that most people will never have their daily lives disrupted by a serious crime. However, the few who do often find themselves unfamiliar with the nuances of the legal system. That can frustrate and confuse victims. It can have the same effect on everyday citizens who are simply trying to understand the procedures in a high-profile case. Welcome. My name is Jeff Kidd, and I'm the Administrative Chief of Staff at the 14th Circuit Solicitor's Office. We bring to you this video series to explain the criminal justice process in the 14th Circuit and to make the confusing clear. In this eighth episode, we explain why charges brought by law enforcement agencies are sometimes dropped or reduced by prosecutors. Prosecutors have a unique and very important ethical responsibility in the American system of criminal justice. Put simply, they are not merely advocates for one side in an adversarial system. Rather, they are called to be ministers of justice. The American Bar Association states that a prosecutor should neither make a charge nor permit the continued pendency of a criminal charge for which there is a lack of admissible evidence to support a conviction. This means our attorneys are sometimes ethically obligated to dismiss charges brought by law enforcement. It is not enough to believe the accused is guilty to proceed with a charge. A prosecutor must be able to prove it. Understand, however, that a dismissal does not necessarily mean that law enforcement acted improperly or made a bad arrest. Rather, a dismissal is most typically a consequence of two considerations. First, it is understood that officers must often make charging decisions in the interest of public safety before all evidence can be collected and analyzed. Second, as you'll remember from previous videos, prosecutors must meet a higher standard of proof than law enforcement. So if a key witness recants, a victim does not cooperate in the investigation, or a lab test returns an exculpatory result not available to police at the time of arrest, a prosecutor might have no ethical alternative but to dismiss a charge even if the initial arrest was perfectly justified under the probable cause standard. Cases can be dismissed for other reasons, and that is not necessarily an indication that the solicitor's office did not pursue prosecution or will not do so in the future. Among other reasons a case might be dismissed, it is remanded for further investigation. Sometimes, when evidence is insufficient to prove a charge beyond a reasonable doubt, the solicitor's office asks the law enforcement agency that brought the charge to investigate further. There is no statute of limitations in South Carolina, and prosecution can resume if new evidence supporting the charge comes to light. It is dismissed by a judge. As described in a preceding section about preliminary hearings, a magistrate can determine that law enforcement did not have probable cause to make an arrest and dismiss a charge. However, even when this occurs, a solicitor can still seek a direct indictment from the grand jury and proceed with the prosecution. A defendant enters a diversion program. The defendants who are eligible for pretrial intervention can have their records expunged upon completion of the program. Under such circumstances, the original charge is recorded as dismissed, even though prosecution was pursued and the defendant faced consequences. It will then be erased altogether if the defendant applies for expungement. Note that the law does not allow the solicitor's office to publicly confirm or acknowledge that a defendant has completed PTI or even that he or she was entered into the program. A judge grants a conditional discharge. This means that the court offered the defendant certain conditions, such as treatment and rehabilitation, instead of being found guilty. As with PTI, the charge is dismissed, even though prosecution was pursued by the solicitor's office and consequences were faced by the defendant. The defendant's case is moved to federal court. The 14th Circuit Solicitor's Office has a unique relationship with the U.S. Department of Justice in which an assistant solicitor is embedded with the U.S. Attorney's Office and authorized to pursue federal charges against 14th Circuit offenders whose crimes meet certain criteria. Usually, these are gun or drug charges for which federal penalties are stronger than those in the state system and more appropriate for the offender. When cases are moved into the federal system, the original state charges are typically dismissed. Defendant's charges are remanded to a lower court. Sometimes, after analyzing a General Sessions level charge, the solicitor's office determines that the evidence supports only a lower level charge. 
For instance, a defendant originally charged with first or second degree assault and battery has actually committed a third degree assault. Though still a crime, this offense carries a lesser penalty and is not typically prosecuted in General Sessions Court. In such an instance, the solicitor's office would file a dismissal and remand the charge to law enforcement for prosecution in magistrate or municipal court. The defendant fails to appear for trial. Sometimes defendants do not show up for a trial or a mandatory hearing. When this happens, a bench warrant can be issued for the defendant's arrest. These cases can remain in administrative limbo until the defendant is apprehended. For record keeping purposes, some law enforcement agencies mark these cases as dismissed, even though the solicitor's office stands ready to proceed with the prosecution. The charge is extraneous or unlikely to result in additional prison time. Often a case consists not of a single charge against the defendant, but of a group of charges that occurred as part of the same criminal act. Remember that to secure convictions, a prosecutor must prove each element of each charge. Sometimes that is worthwhile and will result in a longer prison term. In other instances, additional charges aren't likely to add to the penalty. The defendant would most likely serve concurrent sentences even if convicted of all charges. In some instances, by pursuing all charges, the prosecutor risks confusing the jury or jeopardizing a conviction on the most serious offenses, a risk with little upside. In other instances, proving one of a large set of charges might require a victim to testify and be re-traumatized in the process. In either of these circumstances, a solicitor might determine it is prudent to dismiss some charges and let others stand. If this decision is made after indictments are already secured, these dismissals will likely be marked as null prost, which is a legal term that means the charge has been abandoned by the prosecutor. Again, however, South Carolina has no statute of limitations, and prosecutors might have the option of re-indicting for the offense if circumstances change. The defendant dies awaiting trial. It's rare, but it happens. When it does, the solicitor's office will officially close out the case by filing a dismissal. In our next video, we will describe what happens during initial appearances, second appearances, and other pretrial hearings.